Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Dialing Group's uh, webinar. Today, we are giving you a brief overview of the company and the ongoing public offering of the shares. During the webinar, it is possible to ask uh, questions by writing your question in the right hand box on your screen. Uh, now, I would pass the microphone to Baba Nugana. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paavo Nugan. I'm the CEO of Training Group. Uh, 17 months ago, uh, started the pandemic uh, around the world. And uh, now, 17 months later, we're still seeing that um, there are in place different restrictions in different parts of the world, uh, as well in the Baltic Sea region, where uh, Tiling Group is operating. When the pandemic started, uh, our first uh, two priorities were to cut the costs as much as possible and same time work with uh, liquidity to guarantee that we have enough liquidity to go through this crisis and uh, we didn't know how long this crisis um, will uh, will affect our business. We were, we was predicting that we will see most probably better numbers in 2022, but uh, as well we say that as uh, many of our uh, previous customers come came from uh, different content, contingents from the United States of America or from Asia, then recovering from uh, these markets uh, takes uh, much longer time. Uh, we decided last year, uh, beginning of April, that first we will start uh, uh, discussions and negotiations with our current uh, banks and financial institutions with uh, who we have had very good cooperation uh, throughout uh, tens of years. And same time, we were in discussions with Estonian government and Finnish government uh, to get either the direct loan from the governments or state guarantee for uh, new loans. And we ended up uh, uh, that government of Estonia decided to give direct loan and government of Finland uh, gave the state guarantee for a Nordic Investment Bank loan. And from our uh, uh, financial partners, we uh, gained 60 million extra uh, loans. Altogether, we uh, we received more than 200, or we received 260 million euros uh, new loans into the company. We are very uh, we appreciate governments and our uh, current. Uh, partners and previous uh, financial partners who understood that uh, this pandemic uh, came because uh, something new to all the world and it wasn't connected with the uh, management work or, or uh, things which has been done in the company that we ended up in in such kind of crease. Uh, we also promised during that time that and we understood that uh, in one moment we would like to give opportunity to also to our uh, all our investors we have more than 28000 shareholders uh, to invest into the company and to uh, help the company to come through and come out from this crisis but we decided that we are not going to do it uh, uh, last year because we saw that uh, we need uh, uh, financial, new financial uh, instruments or loans uh, uh, much faster than it was possible to to uh, do last year via the uh, stock exchange and asked our investors. So we have worked now uh, same time with uh, keeping a company in in operations with the cost base. We have worked with different uh, new activities more uh, with the charters and so on. And same time, we uh, were ready to start uh, uh, write the prospectus and uh, come to our investors and 
and give the opportunity to invest into the company during these pandemic uh, periods. Uh, generally, uh, we feel that, uh, and we have seen also during this summer, that there are definitely needs for the traveling, uh, different restrictions in different countries, uh, shows us also the different results. Example, if you're going back to the summer, we, we saw very uh, good interest uh, in our Swedish market where we operate the domestic cruises and also we see now nowadays that uh, passengers and people from Sweden are more ready to travel uh, and more freely traveling. Same time, in Finland, uh, even in Finland, are already 2.55 million people fully vaccinated. The rhetoric from the government side is that if if it's not urgent, then uh, please do not travel yet. And uh, uh, same time, the government saying that when the Finland will reach uh, vaccination rate around 90 percent, 90 percent from the uh, 12 plus uh, age population, then they going to lift most probably the uh, restrictions and uh, easier or the restrictions uh, for future. But uh, we living in the world where everything changed very fast. So we, we can't for sure say that in which moment we will see more passengers from, from our Finnish market. External market uh, doing uh, well. We, we started our Thailand Stockholm route on 7th of uh, July, and it was to us also a bit surprisingly uh, good. Uh, we didn't predict so many passengers uh, during the uh, this summer, but uh, we're operating right now with one vessel, and uh, we are uh, satisfied with these results. But uh, I will give a uh, uh, word to uh, Harry Hanschmidt, later on to Markus Schulz and Jonas Joost. They will go through the presentation. And at uh, the same time, uh, as uh, already said, if you have any questions, we are happy to answer them. Uh, and uh, from my point of view, I, I can say that uh, all the team in Thailink uh, group working uh, with the aim that we coming out from this crisis stronger than we entered this crisis, and and right now we are on the way to to reach it. So uh, we hope that all our investors, uh, actually whose number has been doubled since uh, the crisis will started, will be set, uh, uh, will be happy also in the future uh, for their investments as we haven't changed company's dividend policy, which is that when the financial results uh, allows, we uh, want to pay out a dividend at least uh, five cents, but for sure it takes uh, now a bit time to get back to the situation where we were in 2000, beginning of 2020. But now I will give word to Harry Hansmith. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> But before we go, I, I just uh, for the investors who are watching us, uh, the recording, I would uh, ask you to pause the recording and uh, quickly uh, go through the disclaimer text. And uh, in general uh, summary, I would uh, make a note that the public offering is concluded uh, in Estonia and Finland, and the information is not to be distributed in US or any other restricted markets. I know, Harry. Yes, thank you, Jonas. Uh, Hello, my name is Harry Hanschmidt. I'm a management board member for the Tiling Group. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in for this investor presentation. Three weeks ago, we had a, a second quarter webinar and some of the topics uh, or most of the topics we will, uh, will be covering here um, are already um, actually uh, uh, once, once covered, but uh, we will go uh, over the information um, uh, with the goal that you can actually answer, uh, ask all the questions uh, about secondary public offering. But first we start uh, with a little bit of introduction to the company and the business overview. Uh, 
Tallinn cooperates uh, two very strong uh, uh, brands and um, our, our, our business or who we are is we are the leading European provider um, of leisure and business travel and sea transportation services in the Baltic Sea region. Um, and our uh, vision is to be the market pioneer in Europe by offering excellence in leisure and business travel and sea transportation services. Uh, we own a fleet of 15 vessels. Uh, today, these vessels are uh, uh, operating on six routes. One of the routes, the Riga-Stockholm route, is currently suspended, but we are hoping uh, to uh, reopen this route next year as well. <laughs> Some of the vessels uh, are, are doing alternative uh, charter, uh, charter work, and we will uh, talk about this uh, a little bit later. We also operate uh, four hotels. Uh, the one hotel is uh, closed uh, this high season, um, uh, the Tallinn Hotel, uh, Tallinn Hotel Riga. Uh, some of the KPIs. Uh, uh, in a regular year, our revenues are uh, there about 950 million euros. Uh, past year, uh, 443 million euros, strongly affected by the corona crisis. And uh, we can see that the second quarter uh, this year was 86 uh, million um, euros. We uh, uh, served uh, about 430,000 uh, passengers in the uh, second quarter this, um, uh, this year, on a regular uh, year, this uh, uh, number uh, would be uh, much closer to uh, 3 million uh, passengers. Uh, we transported uh, about 92,000 cargo units and uh, we have a 1.5 uh, billion asset base. This is mainly the vessels. We, uh, in the end of the second quarter this year, we employed uh, 4,300 uh, employees. Uh, the uh, uh, company is quite um, well positioned to to uh, uh, take in <clears throat> different types of crises in, in shipping. Uh, about every 10 or 20 years, always the crisis hits. It's always something new. Uh, the good thing is that our assets are uh, mobile and quite flexible. We can uh, temporarily stop the ships, uh, we can uh, charter the ships out and we can search uh, better, uh, better routes or alternative routes, also temporary uh, routes. The company has uh, done a tremendous um, uh, effort in, in reducing cost, because we understood in this crisis we need to become uh, smaller and more uh, flexible. Therefore, we had to reduce the uh, personnel by about 45% uh, in a very uh, quick uh, period. Uh, this in turn uh, enables us much more flexibility and a more flexible personnel structure uh, going forward. We also used some new uh, business lines and ad hoc uh, routes to keep uh, uh, the business operational, uh, to keep our uh, very qualified personnel uh, busy, even if the demand was uh, lower. So we had six new ad hoc routes uh, between 2020 and 2021, uh, different special cruises to cost and and and, uh, and different um, uh, destinations, mostly regarding Sweden. Uh, we continued uh, our strategy to uh, uh, also uh, build new Burger King restaurants and gather uh, revenues from the uh, mainland in Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. And we built uh, during this uh, time ten. Burger King restaurants with the goal to open about 40 restaurants uh, throughout the Baltics. Uh, we also have a web shop and uh, we can see that the web, web shop revenues uh, during the crisis uh, uh, went up 
uh, six times. We are uh, investing in the uh, webshop technology and, and the people. It has a new team, and uh, we hope uh, that uh, this webshop also performs uh, well in the, in the future and becomes also an important part of our business. Uh, three of our vessels are chartered out. Atlantic Vision is an, a long-term charter and Victoria uh, One and Romantica are also uh, right now chartered out. Uh, we have solid uh, liquidity buffer and throughout the crisis, uh, one of our main goals has been to uh, keep sufficient uh, liquidity. So in the end of the second quarter, we had uh, 116 million euros of liquidity and the undrawn part was 90 million uh, additional liquidity from the Nordic Investment Bank uh, loan. Uh, the, on the corporate governance side, uh, Tallink has a supervisory board that cons consists of seven members and the chairman of the supervisory board is Mr. N. Pint and a uh, management board that cons consists of six members uh, with uh, our uh, chairman of the management board, Pavon Nugana. Uh, our shareholder uh, structure <coughs> is uh, the following. Uh, we have a principal shareholder uh, in Fortar with a uh, shareholding of 39% uh, uh, and uh, all other shareholders are financial shareholders with the largest being Baltic uh, Cruises uh, holding uh, with a combined shareholding of multiple accounts about 22%. Uh, uh, Infortar is the large shareholder and uh, the top 10 uh, shareholders uh, make up the biggest part after Infortar, then we have the institutional investors and retail investors. Our share price today is uh, about 60 euro cent. Uh, we have about uh, 29,000 shareholders uh, and this is combined on the Tallinn Nasdaq Stock Exchange and, and Helsinki Nasdaq uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, through the FTR uh, program as well. Mm -hmm. We continue with the business overview. Uh, the crisis uh, uh, hit um, in uh, March 2020. Uh, so January, February were quite regular for all the routes. After that, uh, you can see this uh, heat map of, of uh, 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 in March, uh, we had limited capacity on Estonia, Finland and Finland, Sweden, and this has continued to this day. Estonia, Sweden and Latvia, Sweden were uh, essentially closed down. And right now we have opened uh, with uh, limited capacity the Estonian, Sweden route and Latvia, Sweden route uh, right now continues to be closed. Cargo operations um, were quite strong and, and it was uh, very good that uh, we were able to uh, uh, provide this uh, possibility for uninterrupted cargo connections throughout the crisis that uh, definitely helped the whole, whole situation. Uh, the passenger numbers unfortunately uh, went uh, down by quite a bit so in 2020 Q1, we transported 1.5 million passengers. Uh, this year, only 270,000. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, second quarter, this is already like for like. So we can see actually a little bit of a recovery because the restrictions uh, were a little bit less. And, and as Pavo mentioned before, we are hoping uh, that through this uh, vaccination program that is proceeding very well uh, actually already uh, uh, the restrictions will be lessened in in Finland and, and uh, Estonia and uh, Sweden and this will obviously help our business uh, going forward but we don't expect any very rapid uh, rapid changes it's most likely going to be a gradual move uh, and cargo cargo operations we talked about were more or less uh, uh, <clears throat> undisturbed. Our asset base uh, is uh, the ships, and uh, fortunately today 
we have found uh, uh, work for uh, most of the ships. Only Isabel is right now uh, inactive. Uh, Isabel uh, is typically on the Stockholm Riga uh, route. All other vessels are in, in operation. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, we operate for uh, hotels. Uh, uh, right now, the Riga Hotel is closed. Other hotel uh, hotels are operating. Um, the demand is is growing, especially on the uh, special events like sports events and and so forth. But obviously, is quite uh, spori sporadic, and and the whole hotel business is also affected uh, quite strongly by the uh, Corona crisis. Uh, and uh, the key events uh, that uh, took place uh, since the beginning of the 2020 and uh, up to uh, mid-August this year, obviously last year, uh, the key event aside from the unfortunate con uh, co uh, COVID pandemic was uh, the completion of uh, all the prepayment installments for the new vessel MyStar and the construction uh, of the vessel. Uh, in addition to in investments into MyStar uh, last year, uh, a year ago, uh, a second-hand cargo vessel Sailor was acquired, which is operating on the Baldeske Kapelshar uh, route. Uh, during the uh, COVID year, we also uh, were honoring the previous design agreement and and. Uh, opened eight new Perging uh, restaurants uh, in uh, the three uh, Baltic states. And uh, due to the COVID in 2020, uh, the company also uh, went through the various cost cutting and reorganization uh, initiatives, uh, boosted uh, sales and significant growth uh, in, in the web shop underwent uh, renovation uh, of in the in Tallinn City Hotel and uh, were, were opening uh, various new uh, pop-up routes and uh, special cruises. Uh, in, in the first half of 21, uh, we've continued opening the Burger King restaurants and completed the Tallinn uh, City Hotel renovation and reopened the uh, hotel uh, in the end of June. Also this year, uh, we restarted Tallinn Stockholm and Helsinki Stockholm routes, uh, which had been closed uh, throughout the pandemic and added a new uh, destination from Stockholm to Ustad. Um, we've managed uh, several short-term uh, charter agreements, including uh, Silla Europa, uh, also currently Victoria and Romantic, as mentioned earlier. And uh, my star christening took place only recently on the 12th of August. And uh, recently we also announced exit from the onshore fashion retail business after disposing the shares in the Baltic retail oil subsidiary. Now I would give the microphone to Margot Schultz. Good afternoon also from my side. Uh, my name is Margot Schultz and I'm a member of the management board and also here in Finland, uh, managing director for Finnish subsidiary. So how all these uh, changes in external business environment and also in our internal actions have uh, affected our financials? So if we start to look first on geographical segments, then we have compared here three figures. First, the Q2 of the normal year, 2019, then Q2 of the first pandemic year, when the big shock uh, in March 2020 hit all of us, and then Q2 2021, where we have had a lot of uh, different uh, actions done uh, on, on, uh, within our company. And for each geographical segment, we have published the numbers of volumes, passengers and cargo volumes, then the number uh, for revenue cost and the segment result. Basically, on Estonia and Finland during Q2, we had some passengers uh, comparing uh, last year because last year the 
the passenger traffic was totally forbidden by Finnish government. But uh, during this year, Q2, we had uh, allowed work-related uh, travel. But of course, the uh, volumes have been um, quite far from normal because all the free time related travel were not uh, accepted by Q2, which was opened only in the beginning of July. Then between Finland and Sweden, we operated only Turku Stockholm line. We did not operate Helsinki uh, Stockholm line. And also this uh, Turku Stockholm line was mostly, so to say, cargo oriented because we had very few number of passengers. Uh, but the cargo volumes were basically on, on normal level. And of course, as we know, Finland is uh, more or less an island where 80% of trade uh, between Finland and other countries goes via sea. Uh, therefore, with Finnish government and Finnish government authority traffic com have decided to support uh, Finland Sweden traffic uh, with support measures in order to ensure the, uh, that cargo units still can go every day between Finland and Sweden. Then Estonia Sweden, we basically didn't have any passenger uh, traffic uh, there. We had only one um, uh, cargo vessel operating during Q2 on this route, and, and these few passengers are passengers with car. Um, so this will be seen also on the on the on the uh, volumes and, and revenue side. And Latvia, Sweden, we did not operate at all uh, during Q2. And I thought, as it was said, we don't uh, open this uh, route during this year. And uh, the cost related to uh, uh, the Latvia, Sweden route are related basically to layoff of uh, vessels and, and layoff of, of our people. And uh, the overall conclusion is that uh, on all routes, we have somewhat higher number of passengers. Uh, the number of cargo units is quite stable. And, and uh, of course, higher number of passengers means that we have uh, more revenue. At the same time, we have, e e able, have been able to reduce uh, cost on certain routes. On some routes, uh, we have uh, had uh, some increase of costs. <laughs> and these are related also to the restart of uh, uh, operations because uh, as we know that after a long time of layoff we needed to make some maintenance work on our vessels and uh, on all routes uh, on all routes basically the uh, segment result was improving from last year then we have also a segment other but i will come back to that on, on that on next slide so if we can go further we have had also quite dramatic, dramatic uh, change in our uh, revenue structure. In normal year, Q2 2019, you can see that uh, more, than, more than half of uh, our revenues came from uh, restaurant and shop sales, on board sales, then about one quarter from ticket sales, 12% uh, from cargo, and, and then the rest have uh, quite small amounts. But now, of course, uh, since the number of passengers have decreased uh, dramatically, we, we can see that uh, that, uh, that the share of cargo in revenues has been increased significantly. So last summer, when the passengers number were extremely small, it was 35%, and Q2 this year, cargo revenues were 27%, uh, not because of cargo. Uh, revenue was decreasing, but the number, higher number of uh, passengers uh, uh, meant also higher revenue. Which is positive to say and highlight here is that, uh, first of all, is that the onboard sales has been strong basically throughout the whole crisis. So the revenue, onboard revenues per, passengers, uh, per passenger has been much higher on all routes than in normal year which means that we have had more loyal uh, customers on board uh, of our vessels, and they have basically bought more uh, things and, and um, things in from our vessels. Cargo operations uh, has been also increasing from last year, but uh, they are still uh, somewhat lower than in normal year. And this is related, of course, to the fact that we have less uh, routes open and uh, less uh, less uh, uh, vessels in our uh, normal operations. And uh, the segment other, which is now has increased its share also uh, somewhat, 
is basically including three items. One was uh, one is a Burger King restaurant, which are currently constantly opened uh, uh, from from the beginning of last year. And of course, uh, I think uh, the result could be even better. But uh, the Q2 results have been affected uh, by the fact that in some countries, uh, shopping centers, where the Burger King restaurants are located, it have been. Uh, closed and uh, we have been able to only make uh, home de delivery. Then uh, Harry mentioned already web shop. The uh, importance of web shop uh, uh, is, is uh, also increasing quite, quite significantly. And then we had also Silla Europa in June chartered to UK for, for short term charter. So the segment other is, of course, small at the moment, but we put uh, quite a lot of focus. To that, and um, and uh, we see that the growth numbers there have been uh, two or even three quote, uh, percentages. So if we go further to debt structure and our liquidity, then like uh, Mr. Nogan said, that uh, uh, the first focus in this crisis have been to ensure our liquidity position and and cash position, and we have been doing this quite uh, uh, successfully. We have currently different uh, long-term loans in the amount of 573 million uh, euros, and this basically consists of uh, uh, seven long-term loans with maturity one, one to eight years. And uh, and uh, and uh, we have also two facilities which by the end of June were agreed, but uh, not withdrawn. One was a Nordic Investment Bank loan. Uh, backed with uh, State of Finland guarantee, and from this facility, 100 million, we still have not used by end of June 90 million euros, and then also uh, uh, almost 200 million euros facility uh, for Meister also have been signed, but not yet drawn. Then on top of that, we have been able to negotiate uh, uh, the overdraft, extra overdraft. So currently, we have totally. 135 million overdrafts, uh, of which 56 million was used by end of June, and 79 million not used. And then, on in order to ensure our liquidity during this coming uh, year, uh, during the crisis, we have also been able to uh, uh, defer some of the, uh, our syndicate payments. And basically, syndicate payments of totally 82 million uh, euros have been deferred and added to the last payment of uh, each respective loan facility. So this all have ensured uh, for us a good uh, liquidity position and, and uh, ensure that, uh, uh, that um, our cash will be sufficient to also uh, stand the forthcoming uh, difficult times. And overall, I could just also say that we have a quite good uh, balance sheet. Uh, I mean, our liquidity, we have defined uh, that it's in, in comfortable zone, and, and we don't see a major problem with that. If we look at development of liquidity uh, during the crisis, if the next slide. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, then, then basically on this uh, slide, we have summarized uh, major actions uh, which increased our liquidity and decreased our liquidity uh, basically from end of 2019. And you can see, like I mentioned, we have new, last year we negotiated new overdraft facilities. We had a different uh, state support mechanism. I will refer to that uh, from Estonian, Latvian, uh, Finnish and Swedish uh, uh, states. We have had also uh, uh, the 100 million loan from Credex or Estonian direct loan, Estonian state direct loan, and also a loan from the Nordic Investment Bank in the amount of 10 million. And then, of course, we had uh, we had uh, some kind of uh, some uh, some financing cost and also investment cost the last year were uh, quite significant. And this 100 million investment cash flow is uh, mostly, of course, uh, related to the building of um, Vessel Maestar. But also there have been also some other uh, costs uh, and investment. Sorry, for instance, the purchase of our cargo vessel sailor and, and some other. And then in 2020, 2021, uh, when when the first year basically you can see that uh, that the movement of cash have been smaller and and uh, 
we have, for instance, reduced on significantly the investment cash flow. And uh, by the end of uh, June, we had very strong and healthy cash position, uh, uh, 117 million. And like I mentioned already, then we have still uh, 90 million unrolled uh, loan from Nordic Investment Bank. And then, of course, proceed uh, 30 million plus uh, from forthcoming uh, equity, uh, um, equity issue. And uh, you can see that basically the equity issue, Jonas will come back to that. The main purpose of equity issue is maybe not so much to ensure the liquidity, but maybe more to strengthen our capital position and, and also to show uh, the commitment of our shareholders uh, to the development and future of the company. Next, please. And um, then the second, uh, I think it should be cost efficiency. First. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and the second focus during the whole crisis on top of this uh, liquidity management, of course, have been on our, our costs because when the uh, revenues are very unstable and also very unpredictable, then of course we have to uh, reduce our cost. And here also we have full years 2019 and 2020. You can see that already in 2020 we made significant cost reduction measurements. Uh, in all categories what we have, uh, but of course a full effect uh, uh, were not reached because uh, some of the uh, measurements uh, like for instance reduction of our staff uh, were done only in the second half of uh, 2020 and therefore the full impact of that is uh, seen only in 2021. But uh, like I mentioned, uh, we have been able to reduce significantly, significantly the cost uh, in all categories and uh, uh, if you want, as a cost of sales, uh, which is basically all operational costs uh, are higher than last year, then basically, this, like I mentioned, are uh, uh, related to the preparation of vessels, to operations of the long layup period. And also, of course, our, the cost of fuel has been in fifth year uh, uh, somewhat higher. And of course, uh, one of the costs which uh, have been quite significant is our stuff. And unfortunately, we have had uh, to reduce it quite significantly. So you can see that uh, both onshore, onboard, and, and hotel stuff is uh, basically half of the level which we used to have pre COVID times. But on the positive side, I think that uh, this all cost efficiency measurement we have done. Uh, has also uh, impact uh, on our operations long term. We are now much more able to uh, use our workforce more flexible. We have been uh, even further uh, uh, developed our lean procedures and, and um, operations. And I think that this kind of uh, crisis period is good from this sense that, that it has been able to uh, focus well, us to focus on the key questions and key operations. And I think that this will also be one of the positive effects uh, from this crisis in long term, not only in short term cost efficiency. And uh, if we come to this uh, support measures, then as I mentioned, uh, these support measures have been uh, granted uh, from different countries. Uh, last year, the total number of different support measures was much higher. And of course, it is very, uh, I think, uh, right way because uh, we all remember that you big queues of uh, trucks between on Polish uh, German borders, uh, etc. So we had really uh, the risks that in this part of world, in Finland, in Estonia, there will be a shortage of maybe consumer goods, medicines, and so on. So I think that uh, there's a very quick reaction of different states and state authorities ensure really that, uh, that that cargo traffic, which was vital for economies in, in all our region, uh, was, uh, was uh, kept in, in, in operations. And uh, yeah, this year we have also got uh, some kind of some of the uh, support measures in Finland and Sweden uh, related to the operations of cargo and in Sweden uh, related to the workforce, but the importance of these uh, uh, has been uh, lower than, than last year during Q2. And on top of that uh, direct support which we have received, we have been also able to negotiate uh, uh, tax payments uh, with, with uh, 
uh, tax authorities and also some countries have been uh, establishing uh, support measures uh, which are paid directly to the staff of our company so these are numbers are on top of this 11 million euros due to uh, first half uh, this year so this is a short summary of financials and now Jonas yours will flow, disclose uh, details of our uh, public offering yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, Margos. Just to briefly and very briefly sum up uh, the ongoing public offering, uh, on 18th of August, we published uh, the prospectus on the offering and, and la launched uh, the offering. In total, uh, there are 66,988,204 new shares uh, on the offer with a price of 47 uh, euros. And uh, overall, this amounts to 31.5 uh, uh, million euros. And in case of oversubscription, uh, there's a possibility of uh, extending the offer by 10% or up to uh, 34.6 million euros combined. The reason for the offering uh, is to engage additional capital to comply with the commitments we have agreed uh, with our financing banks. Uh, the offering will strengthen the capital position and capital structure of the company and it will also further strengthen the liquidity and helps us to overcome the difficulties that have been caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the offer is uh, directed mainly to the existing shareholders and all the shareholders who were uh, shareholders uh, as of 17th of August I have a preemptive right, uh, which means that in the allocation uh, they are guaranteed to receive one share, share per each 10 share, share owned uh, at the price of 47 cents. And uh, the largest uh, shareholder, Infartar, has issued uh, a subscription guarantee to the company and the total amount of 15 uh, million euros and the provided guarantee is unconditional and irre irrevocable and uh, from the timeline as mentioned uh, the subscription period started on 18th of August and it will end on 1st of September which means that uh, the last day of making uh, subscriptions is 1st of September results will be announced on 3rd of September and the new shares will start uh, trading uh, on Thailand stock exchange on 17th of September and the new FDRs on Helsinki stock exchange will start trading on 21st of September. So that's uh, that's a brief overview of the company and the offering and we would now proceed uh, to the questions and answers. Uh, and the first uh, question is, what is uh, the plan B if this capital raising will not succeed in the amount you expect? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, first of all, we we are sure that we will uh, succeed with, uh, with this capital raising, uh, but uh, uh, if uh, uh, Oscar uh, wants to have the plan B, then I think that and I hope that everyone understood that we don't need this money for the liquidity issue right now. Our liquidity all together with uh, all uh, uh, named uh, partners are uh, more than uh, 200 million euros if you, if you take into account the Nordic Investment Bank uh, loan and so on. So this is more uh, for capital uh, structure question and this is also a question that our shareholders can invest into the company with uh, attractive uh, share price during this pandemic and uh, and uh, somehow show the trust for the company and company can uh, later on uh, with our work uh, pay back to the investors uh, with the higher share price which uh, hopefully uh, in future will uh, uh, will be again normal uh, like it was in COVID times. 
Thank you. Um, the next question, what is your current base case expectation for the time when dividend payment will be restored? I understand that there could also be a negative case. We don't want to predict it because uh, we no one knows uh, when this COVID situation will, will be solved and uh, I'm uh, uh, confident that also the Oscar don't know it, what, uh, what, uh, how looks the future in the Botexy region after two weeks or one month. Of course, we, we hope that the vaccination process helps the uh, uh, situation to recover as, as quickly as possible, but at the same time, uh, we reading the news is uh, from different uh, countries where the uh, even the vaccinated people need to have already the first shot and most probably also the fourth. But at the same time, we have also read the news is that the science is working to have the medicine in place already uh, beginning of next year. So I think it's a bit uh, uh, it's it's not good to predict right now when uh, when we will be back in the moment that we are able to pay the dividend, but for sure the management and all the company working to achieve it. Thank you. Uh, next question: How do you manage the fuel price risk? Yes, we we working right now with the market price, so the risk is. Uh, is there for sure, but we doing everything we can to optimize our fuel consumption for the vessels. So we haven't uh, fixed uh, fuel price uh, uh, right now and uh, we'll see what the future brings. Thank you. Uh, next question, when will MyStar start operating? My star will start operations uh, first part of next year. There are uh, some delays due to the COVID uh, uh, problems in the shipyard, but uh, uh, we are confident that my star will be operating when uh, we need it. Uh, as you, as everyone knows, the seasonality in our business uh, uh, have the big effect and. Uh, uh, to us as the company is the most important that during the summer the vessel is operating and uh, right now we predict that uh, during the second quarter the MyStar starts operations. What about the route between Tallinn and Visby? Was that a success? Uh, Yes, actually, from Tallinn to Visby, there has been uh, several years already still Europa doing the trips, uh, uh, some of them during the summer. So uh, we have seen uh, our customers uh, like it and love it. And uh, uh, yes, it's uh, successful. Uh, thank you. Uh, can existing uh, shareholders which are not residents of Estonia or Finland participate in the public offering. Uh, and another question is uh, that uh, can uh, Lithuanian investors participate in the public offering? So as stated uh, before, the public uh, offer, uh, the shares are publicly offered in Estonia uh, and, and Finland, uh, but uh, in, in case the shareholders find the information on their own and are uh, contacting uh, their broker and requesting uh, to subscribe, then uh, then we cannot uh, uh, we can stop them. Um, the next question: Can Estonian investors subscribe for unsubscribed Finnish shares and vice versa? Uh, the FDR holders and the shareholders uh, have uh, the same uh, preemptive uh, rights in the first step of allocation, so uh, they are viewed as uh, one pool and the same rules are applied. Uh, next question is, why is the capital raise priced so low? Yes, sorry, I was uh, unmuted. Uh, I was muted. Uh, so this is the actually accounting price for the share. We don't have the nominal price for share. So if you uh, uh, if you divide 
uh, uh, capital with the shares, then you will uh, find 0 0.47 euro. And we, we wanted to keep it as attractive as possible. Uh, and this is the lowest price under the Estonian law is possible to, to price the share uh, in our company. And that's why it's 0 0.47. And we are happy if uh, Oscar uh, thinks that it's, it's low, then it's most probably gives a good opportunity to, to get uh, from this investment something more back. Thank you. Next question. I see the expansion of Burger King business somewhat important, not only in terms of cash, cash generation to regain, uh, regain turnover quickly in the current market. How are you ensuring the success of the Burger King expansion plan from 10 restaurants to 40 restaurants? Further 30 restaurants could quickly be bring up to 30 million euros in additional uh, turnover. Uh, thank you for the question. I think I, I would very much agree that um, uh, the Burger King business uh, is some, somewhat important and, and, and uh, we can already uh, see a quite healthy revenue with today's 10 restaurants uh, and we are still uh, really in the startup uh, period. Uh, uh, so uh, right now our pace uh, is about eight restaurants uh, per year. If, uh, if the economy gets uh, better, if, uh, if there is uh, less of the coronavirus crisis, we can uh, perhaps ramp this uh, up, uh, but else we will uh, continue with our current plan. We will see many more um, thriving restaurants that uh, hopefully generate uh, even, even more revenue. And then this uh, Pan-Baltic uh, project uh, for us is very interesting and, and we are uh, committed. Thank you. Uh, the next question is uh, in Estonian language, as, and as uh, indicated, uh, we are going to answer this question in Estonian. Mida sisuliselt tähendab emitendi ära nägemine punktis, jaotuse punktis? Teiseks jaotatakse pärast ülal toodud punkti, eh, punkti kohast jaotamist üle jäänud uued aktsed emitendi ära nägemisel. See tähendab seda, et kui esimeses ringis on siis sisuliselt proportsionaalne jaotus see läbi, et kui näiteks aktsionäril on kümme aktsiat, siis tal on võimalik märkida, või tal on võimalik selle kümme aktsiast garanteeritud saada üks aktsia, kui ta on selle märkinud, siis teistes ringides juhul kui keegi jätab aktsiad märkimata või on ülemärkimine ja nõukogu otsustab kasutada oma õigustes 10% võrra suurendada väljantavate aktsete mahtu, siis see on nõukogu otsus alusel, milline toimub see jaotus täpsemalt juba järgnevates ringides. Täpselt selliselt see, selliselt see välja näeb. And to quickly translate to English, the question was, what does, what does the question mean in the allocation point that the issuer will allocate the shares upon its uh, discretion in the second step and the answer was that uh, in the first round it's effectively pro rata the allocation so for 10 shares uh, one new share uh, will be guaranteed but in case uh, somebody uh, uh, does not subscribe for their shares or if there's an um, decision if there's an the subscription and decision by the supervisory board to increase uh, the offering, then it's it's a sole discretion of the company of uh, by which rules the allocation in the second round will take place. Uh, the next question: Is it not a danger to defer from the core business with the Burger King business? Uh, thank you for the question. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think it's uh, it's danger. Burger King is um, already in our uh, core business as well, and, and it, it's available on uh, the, the uh, Megastar and Star. Uh, so it's a little bit in, uh, implemented into the core business and, and uh, doing well on the ships. 
uh, and uh, it will be a uh, supporting uh, business on 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 the land, uh, but there uh, most likely will be a cap of how how many restaurants can be can be built. Uh, so um, there are other supporting businesses as well that are are growing uh, as as is uh, the web shop, and and uh, this is also very well integrated into our core business. Uh, the, these projects have also separate uh, team that uh, are quite uh, have quite a lot of independence of how they uh, lead the project. Uh, thank you. Uh, and the next question, uh, which is a follow-up question, can you secure financial resources for the Burger King expansion? Where are you planning to open the new restaurants? The new restaurants are <clears throat> quite uh, equally opened between uh, Latvia, uh, Estonia and, and uh, Lithuania. And there is uh, more of a question uh, uh, how, how we find uh, the right uh, space or the right uh, buildings or... or <clears throat> And uh, yes, I, I believe we, uh, we can uh, find the financial uh, resources uh, uh, as the restaurants are not that expensive uh, to build and then start uh, generating uh, revenue uh, straight away. Thank you very much. It seems uh, that uh, we have almost exhausted an hour and uh, fully exhausted all the questions that were sent. So in the name of the company, uh, thank you very much for participating on uh, today's webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye.